Hi friends, welcome to this class on atoms and molecules and I promise to make this topic absolutely easy for you. So good evening everyone, welcome for this class on atoms and molecules. So I'm going to take you into the journey into these particles and we are going to make the concepts really easy on what are atoms, what are molecules, we'll also talk about ions. So guys, make sure you watch the entire video. So hope all of you are doing great and I'm sure a lot of you are preparing for your exams right now. So this will be a great revision for your lesson. So let's go ahead and start. And before we start, I just want to say that do check out the courses on our website. We have uh, all these courses on physics, chemistry, maths, and I'm excited to announce that we have on CBSE for CBSE class 10, ICSE class 10, and we've recently launched this course for the international board that is Cambridge IGCSE. So guys, please make sure you guys go ahead and take these courses. So do take a look at our website, manochacademy.com. We have these courses on physics, chemistry, and maths, and uh, you can watch more interactive videos, attend live classes, uh, take mock tests. There are quizzes and questions. So, and you can also ask doubts. So do check out the full courses on our website. They're on big discounts. And also please do share it out with your friends. So guys, let's go ahead and start our journey into the particles. So if you take a look at the picture here, what are we seeing here? Here we can see that this is a river, right? So all of you have seen river, lakes and oceans. What is river made up of? So is river matter or not? Can you guys tell me? Is river matter? Right? Definitely it's matter, right? So in fact, all the things that we see around us, whether you look at the river, you look at the trees, the mountains, the air, they're all matter. And what is matter? They basically have mass, they, uh, they have mass, right? And they occupy space, or we can say they have volume. So you know the entire world around us is made of matter. Whether you're looking at your phone, tablet, that is matter. The air in your room is matter, right? The walls in your room, uh, this uh, tablet pen that I'm using here, these are all matter, okay? So let's take this example of the river, right? So river is matter. Now we want to analyze what is the river made up of? So let's take a look. So if you look at this large river, we can fill up the water into a glass, right? So here you can see this is a simple glass of water. So what we have here is just a glass of water. So from the river, we have come down to a simple glass of water. Now, can we go smaller? Definitely. What is water made up of? Small drops, right? So if you look at water, you guys have seen, right? There's small drops of water, as you can see here. So as you're seeing, we are going closer and closer. We are zooming into matter, right? So here you can see the drops of water. Now, what is a drop of water made up of? Can you guys tell me? Fantastic. Harkrit Singh says water molecules, right? Even Srilata says that. Excellent, guys. You guys know your chemistry. So you know water is, even this drop of water is made up of tiny particles tiny, tiny particles, right? So we can take the water drop and divide it into, so if you consider a drop of water here, what are we saying? The water drop is actually made up of tiny, tiny particles, right? So this is a drop magnified for you. So all of you agree with me that the water drop is made up of tiny, tiny particles, right? And now what are these particles? Are they atoms or molecules? What do you guys think? So if you look at each water particle and the scientists analyze it, the water particle is actually a water molecule, right? So here, what are we looking at guys? We are looking at a water particle. And this particle is, so if you take a drop of water, you can imagine it's made of small, small particles. And this water particle is actually a water molecule. Right, so you have heard this term in chemistry. Uh, can you see the molecules with your naked eye? Can you and I see molecules? Can we see them? So can you see a molecule like this? Have you ever seen a water molecule like this? No, they are very, very small, right? 
Of course, we cannot see it with the naked eye. Very good. I can see a lot of you are saying no, because these are extremely tiny particles, right? These particles are extremely tiny. So we cannot see them with the naked eye. Very, very tiny and cannot be seen. We can see a drop, but we cannot see the water molecule. Cannot be seen with the naked eye, right? So obviously the scientists are using, even you can't see it with a microscope. You need electron microscope. You cannot see it with a simple microscope, I mean, right? So the scientists analyzed it and they said these particles are very small. And what is this water molecule actually made up of? So the water molecule is actually made up of even tinier particles, which are called atoms. And guys, can you see there are three atoms here? So atoms are assumed to be like a ball, right? Like a sphere. Okay. So water molecule is a very tiny particle and we'll be talking in detail. What is a molecule? First, I'm taking you into this journey of particles. So here you can see there are three atoms, one, two, and three. And so the scientists analyzed it and said that the water molecule is actually made up of an oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. And these atoms are bonded. Okay. So water molecule is actually made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen. And that's why we write it as H2O. Okay. So atoms are even tinier, right? So two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Absolutely right. Excellent. Now, the scientists believe that the atom is indivisible. It is the smallest particle. So guys, see, where are we at? We started with a big river, huge river. Then we talked about a glass of water, right? Like a glass of water that you drink, that you and I drink. So we brought that river to a glass of water, right? And then from the glass of water, we looked at a drop. From the drop, we went to the water molecule, okay? And now we have gone from the water molecule to these individual atoms, right? Now, is the atom the smallest particle or can you break it down further? What do you guys think? Can an atom be broken down further? So long time back, the scientists thought that atom is the smallest particle, right? Atom is the tiniest particle and you cannot break it down further because the word atomos means indivisible, right? So originally atom was thought to be the tiniest particle or indivisible. And here, what do we have? We have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And they said, you can't go smaller than this. But later on, the scientists found that, yes, you guys are right. Fantastic. The atom also can be divided into further smaller particles. And what are these called? Very good. I see Animesh is writing, right? And Pragna is writing protons, electrons, and neutrons. So here we are further diving in into the atom. So from the river, we are going into the atom here and you can see the atom looks something like this, where in the center you have the nucleus. You guys are familiar with this, right? So in the center, we have the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. Okay. Protons are the positively charged particles. So these red ones are the protons and they're positively charged. Then you have neutrons, which have zero charge. So neutrons, you can remember, right? The word neutron means neutral. So neutrons have zero charge. Okay. And then finally you have the electrons, right? So these are the electrons. And electrons are negatively charged particles, right? Electrons are negatively charged particles. So the atom, now here, what are we looking at? We are looking inside the atom. This whole thing is an atom, right? So the atom is made up of these tiny particles called protons, electrons, neutrons, right? And uh, protons and neutrons are in the center. They're called the nucleus and you have the electrons revolving around it, okay? Neutrons, they have zero charge by their nature, right? The protons, they are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged, okay? So guys, we took this journey into the particles because the scientists are saying that the entire matter, all the matter that you're looking at is made up of tiny, tiny particles. And these particles are even smaller than a dot. Okay. We can't see them with the naked eye. So it's really interesting. And yes, protons, electrons, neutrons, they're called subatomic particles. Very good. So we went from the river 
to the subatomic particle. So what was our journey? We started from the big river, right? And then we went to the glass of water, right? And from the glass of water, we zoomed in further and went to this tiny drop of water, right? So drop of water, from the water we went to molecules, from that drop, the drop is made up of molecules and which is further made up of atoms, right? And then we went further and saw that the atom is basically made up of protons, electrons and neutrons. So can you see how interesting it is that if at every stage you keep zooming into matter, right? You're basically going further and further, right? So from the big river, even the big river is made up of tiny, tiny water molecules or hydrogen and oxygen atoms, right? And they are made up of protons, electrons, neutrons. So finally, everything that you look around you guys is made up of atoms and atoms are made up of protons, electrons, neutrons. So it's really, really interesting, okay? But now let's talk about and really understand what are these atoms and molecules? How do they combine? So I'm going to make it really interesting and then we look at the chemical formulas and valencies, okay? So let's take a look, guys. So as we discussed, the atom can be thought of like a sphere, right? Like a ball. You can visualize the atom like a sphere or a ball. And here I have some examples for you. Are all the atoms the same size? So in my simple picture, it looks like the same size, but do you agree that they are all the same size? The answer is no, okay? Different atoms have different sizes, okay? But here, just for simplicity, I've drawn them and you might be recognizing the symbol here. So can you guys tell me what is this blue colored atom which has H written on it, okay? And of course, they're not colored like this, right? We have just shown it. So what does this H represent, guys? The first atom, right? So this first one, H is hydrogen atom. So here we have an atom of hydrogen, right? Then we have the sodium atom here. So this is hydrogen atom, sodium atom, HE. What is this guys? Very good. I see Aman says helium. Excellent. Aditya says that. Fantastic. This is the helium atom. So these are atoms of different elements, right? So what are we looking at here? We are talking about atoms of different elements. And you know from chemistry that there are so many different elements, but all elements are made of atoms, but their atoms are different. So a hydrogen atom is different from a sodium atom. It's not that the hydrogen atom is blue and sodium atom is yellow. This is just my simple uh, representation here. The difference is in the number of protons and electrons and neutrons, okay, which you'll study in my, the structure of atom chapter. You can search my videos also on that. We have on the website or on YouTube. Okay, so do check out those videos, right? So this is the helium atom. Cl, what is Cl? Very good. Cl stands for chlorine atom. So these are all the different elements, right? And what about the last one? O, right? You know that we are breathing oxygen, right? In the air, this is the oxygen atom. Okay, so these are atoms of different elements, the tiny, tiny particles. Why are atoms important? Because chemical reactions take place based on atoms. So they are very, very important. Uh, we, uh, for chemical reactions, we, uh, we are not, uh, the proton, electron, neutron, the electrons participate, but the atoms remain, right? In a chemical reaction, if you have on the reactants, you have uh, uh, the atoms, these remain in the products, okay? So now uh, we've understood that all the different elements are made up of these tiny particles called atoms, right? So now let's take a look at what are molecules then? So molecules, as we discussed, molecules are made up of atoms. Do you guys agree, right? So atom is the tiniest particle. If you're not going further into proton, electron, neutron, atom is the tiniest particle that takes part in a chemical reaction, okay? So every element is represented finally with atoms, okay? So let's take a look when we talk about molecules of elements, right? So all of you agree, very good. 
molecule is made up of atoms right so let's write that down very important molecules are made up of atoms right or basically in simple words atoms combine to form molecules okay so for example if i'm talking about hydrogen gas right so let's talk about hydrogen gas hydrogen is a gas right it is made up of tiny particles right now the question is the tiny particles of hydrogen gas they are the molecules of hydrogen now do they contain one hydrogen atom two three how many do they contain do you guys know how many atoms of hydrogen are present in the hydrogen molecule and yes i'm coming to ions also okay very good so a lot of you are saying h2 two hydrogen atoms fantastic so you guys know your chemistry that's great so basically what do we have here that hydrogen actually looks like this right so guys can you see this is a visualization of hydrogen the hydrogen molecule because we are talking of elements right now and then we'll come to compounds so hydrogen molecule is actually made up of two hydrogen atoms why two because a single hydrogen atom is not stable so it wants to combine with another hydrogen atom and make up the molecule okay and great to see 300 likes guys if you haven't hit the like button please hit it right now and do share this video with your friends so i'd like all of you to hit the like button right now and make sure you share our channel with your friends and also do check out the website manuchacademy.com and i put the links for the courses below so you can check it out all right so let's take a look at this molecule so what is the difference between atom and molecule i am coming to that all matter exists in terms of molecules right and molecules are made of atoms so right now we are talking about molecules of elements so if you look at hydrogen gas it is made of hydrogen molecule every hydrogen molecule is made of two hydrogen atoms okay now let's talk about helium right so if this is a helium molecule do you guys know how many atoms of helium are there in the molecule one two or three or four or five how many is it what's my name my name is sandeep manocha and if you're new to the manocha academy channel please hit the subscribe button right now and also hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the videos so some of you are saying one some of you are saying two guys helium is a noble gas okay so the helium molecule is very interesting because it is made up of only one helium atom right so in helium the molecule and atom is the same thing okay molecule and atom is same for helium the helium molecule is just made of one helium atom is that clear why because the helium atom is stable it has the duplet configuration which you learn when we uh, look at the electronic configuration so for now you need to know that helium is a noble gas it has a stable configuration and therefore it does not combine with any other helium atoms to form a molecule okay so helium molecule is very simple one helium atom now let's talk about oxygen guys so how many atoms of oxygen are there in oxygen gas do you guys know so when we talk about an oxygen molecule so let's talk about oxygen molecule so oxygen molecule again oxygen by its nature the oxygen atom is not stable very good so you guys know that hydrogen is h2 right so hydrogen is h2 helium is simply h so that's how we denote the molecule because there is only one and oxygen is o2 why again we have to look into the details that oxygen atom is not stable it likes to combine with another one for stability okay so it likes its oxygen friend and then it becomes an oxygen molecule like this so oxygen actually looks like o2 okay so the oxygen molecule is o2 fantastic and the molecule this means it is made up of two oxygen atoms so you can think like two spheres combined together right what about sodium right na stands for sodium so sodium molecule guys how many atoms are there so when you're representing sodium do you write na1 or you don't have to write one do you write na na2 na3 what do you guys think 
So in sodium molecule, what is it? So sodium molecule, very simple. It is just Na. So it is just made of one sodium atom, right? So for metals, the atomicity which we'll talk about is one, right? So for sodium molecule, we just say Na, right? What about chlorine? Chlorine gas, Cl is chlorine. So how does the chlorine molecule look? Can you guys tell me? So chlorine molecule, is it made up of one atom, two atoms, three atoms? So we are talking about the molecule of chlorine. Very good, you guys know your chemistry, chlorine molecule is Cl2, right? It has two chlorine atoms. So it looks something like this. So basically it has two atoms, right guys? So the representation, the visualization in your mind should be two, right? And so it is two chlorine atoms. Now this is of course the difficult part in chemistry because you have to learn these values, okay? Right? So basically what have we seen here, please understand that molecules of elements are made of one or more atoms. One atom is like the noble gases, like helium. Can you guys see? Helium is just made of one atom. Or metals, the molecule is just one atom, right? But when you look at gases like hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, these are made of two atoms. Ozone, you know, it has three atoms, right? So molecules of elements, they are made of one or more atoms and the same atom, right? Because in molecule of elements, you have the same atom involved. Only hydrogen atoms in the hydrogen molecule. Only oxygen atoms in the oxygen molecule. No other element, right? Because we are talking only about the element. So exactly, now let's talk about this is what is called atomicity, right? The number of atoms present in the molecule, right? So what is atomicity? Number of atoms in a molecule, right, of the element. So you have to learn these atomicity values. So for example, if you take a look here, what is the meaning of monoatomic? Monoatomic basically means atomicity one, right? Where the atomicity value is one. Diatomic by the name two, tri, three, tetra, four, and octa means eight. Octopus, right? Eight legs. So please take a look here, guys. Who are the monoatomic, which have atomicity one? All their molecules only have one atom, like helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and all the metals. So this is useful to know that usually the metals are considered monoatomic. Is that clear? Right? What is diatomic? Just like we saw, oxygen, O2, chlorine, Cl2, right? Hydrogen. So all these guys like nitrogen, fluorine, bromine, they all have two atoms in one molecule. Right? Awesome. What about, have you heard of ozone layer? Have you guys heard of the ozone layer? and you know the pollution is spoiling the uh, ozone layer, right? The, U the UV rays, right? So ozone, uh, ozone layer is O3, where one ozone molecule contains three oxygen atoms, right? Then you have phosphorus, which is tetraatomic, four, four phosphorus atoms, P4. And then you have sulfur, which is octaatomic, S8. So one molecule of sulfur contains eight sulfur atoms, okay? So this is very important. So guys, you can take a screenshot of this table and please learn this table because you have to learn these values. Even when I was a student like you, I had to learn these values, you know? There's no simple trick, but you arrange it in a table like this, like in the monoatomic, you can see uh, the rules uh, that they are all noble gases and metals. So let me share some tricks with you that will help you learn this, right? So what is atomicity? Like we talked about, number of atoms in one molecule, right? Number of atoms in one molecule of the element. And what are the useful rules you can remember? Metals are considered monoatomic, right? So metals, we consider it as monoatomic. Usually solids can be written as monoatomic, even though their atomicity may be greater than one. So what do I mean by this? If you take the example of phosphorus. So phosphorus can be written in the equation as P or P4. But usually if they ask you the question, what is the atomicity of phosphorus? You should write it as four, okay? But approximately, you know, we can write it as P also, even though it's P4. Same sulfur can be written as S, but the correct thing to write is S8 if you're considering atomicity, right? 
So sometimes in the equation you'll see S instead of S8. Many gases have atomicity greater than one, but all noble gases are monoatomic. So this is a very important rule to remember like we discussed. Can you guys see all the noble gases here? They are monoatomic. That means they have atomicity equal to one. Okay. All right. And then the nob noble gases are monoatomic, but usually the other gases, they have atomicity greater than one. Atomicity is very different from valency. So we'll talk about that. You guys might have heard of these terms. Atomicity we discussed here and valency. Please note that they are not the same number. Okay, that these numbers are not the same. All right, so let's take a look guys. So we'll be discussing about valency next. So atomicity is clear to you. Please have this thing in mind that they are only for the elements, right? So we are talking about the molecule of the elements, which will, the molecule is made up of atoms and elements means they are the same type of atom. And this is the important atomicity table I discussed. You can take a screenshot of this and you can learn that. All right. So now guys, next let's move on to valency. What is the meaning of valency? Valency is the combining capacity of an element with other elements. Till now we were only talking about the same element. Okay. But you know that when atoms combine, the atoms can combine with themselves with the same atoms like this, right? So they will form elements. So when atoms combine to form molecules, they can form molecules of the elements or they can form compounds, right? So when they combine with other elements, what will they form in chemistry? They're going to form compounds. Do you guys agree that when different elements combine, right? So for example, if I take hydrogen and chlorine, so if you take the example of hydrogen and chlorine, what will this form? So let's say we take hydrogen and we combine it with chlorine. What are we guys going to get here? What is the compound going to be? Very good. I see Mahesh is saying HCl. Harshit is saying HCl. Very good, right? So what is the compound we are getting? Hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, right? HCl. Now valency is combining capacity of an element with other elements, right? So let's say hydrogen is the simplest element. Its valency is considered to be one. So based on this, what is the valency of chlorine? Because one chlorine atom can combine with only one hydrogen atom. So what is the valency of chlorine? Therefore, we can say valency of chlorine is one. Okay, why? Because valency of hydrogen is considered one. So valency of hydrogen is one. Right, the simplest element, its valency is considered one. So therefore, valency of chlorine also is going to be one. Why? Because one chlorine atom has the power to combine with only one hydrogen atom. Is that clear? So this is the meaning of valency. One chlorine atom can only combine with one hydrogen atom. Okay, now let's take a look next at oxygen. So if we take oxygen and hydrogen, right? If we combine these, right? So usually hydrogen is simple to consider. So if we take oxygen and then we take hydrogen here, how many atoms can I combine it with? Can I simply, you know, put one atom like this? So is this the answer? Is it just like HCl? Is this the correct combination? Can we just join it? So we know that's not true. Oxygen atom can actually combine with two hydrogen atoms, right? So you know that oxygen can combine with two hydrogen atoms and this is our water. So what is the valency of oxygen, guys? Can you see that one oxygen atom combines with two hydrogen atoms? So therefore, what is the valency of oxygen? valency of oxygen is two. Fantastic. Can you see the difference between chlorine and oxygen? Chlorine can combine with only one hydrogen atom. So valency of chlorine is one. 
but oxygen has greater power combining capacity is more it can combine with two hydrogen atoms so valency of oxygen is two what if we take the example of nitrogen so let's bring our nitrogen friend here okay so let's take nitrogen do you guys know how many hydrogen atoms can it combine will it only be one so what is the answer guys can nitrogen combine with only one hydrogen how many very good kajal is saying three right what do the other people think so i see one three here right harshit is saying three excellent guys the correct answer is three here one nitrogen atom can actually combine with three hydrogen atoms and do you know what is the name of this compound so nitrogen can combine with three hydrogen atoms so let's write that down one nitrogen combines with three hydrogen atoms and who can tell me the name of this compound the formula is basically nh3 right what is the name very good arush has written ammonia fantastic aditya has written ammonia many of you written that nairin fantastic sorry if i'm not able to take everybody's name here i'm constantly looking at the chat and great to see around 450 likes if you haven't hit the like button please hit it right now guys awesome to see the response here and i'm sure you your chemistry will improve after watching this video okay so what is the one nitrogen can combine with three hydrogen atoms therefore what is the valency of nitrogen therefore valency the combining capacity of nitrogen is this is not nitric acid this is ammonia guys nh3 so valency of nitrogen is three because it can combine with three atoms of hydrogen so can you see chlorine's power is less combining capacity is less only one hydrogen atom so valency is one oxygen's valency is little more combines with two to form water right h2o you can see here this is h2o the water that we are drinking right and then if you look at ammonia nitrogen has a valency of three it can combine with three hydrogen atoms so is this clear oh this is not ammonium very good that is nh4 plus that's a different thing this is ammonia so nitrogen's valency here is three okay so what is valency where atom one atom of an element is combining with other elements the keyword is other right and you can compare that with this we were talking of molecules of elements uh, previously the atom was same h2 o2 cl2 or just he but now we have more than one element involved in these examples hcl right h2o ammonia right so basically we are talking of molecules of compounds where basically different type of elements are combining can you guys see that so molecules of compounds so it becomes very interesting so atoms of same elements can combine to form molecules of elements but if they're combining with different elements it's forming molecules of compounds okay so these are the examples right and so let's take a look at you know uh, we have done this combination here so what did we do so let's say you take hydrogen and oxygen right so we have to take because valency is one uh, of hydrogen and oxygen's valency is two the formula looks like this right the molecule looks like this so this is the water molecule right so this is what we talked about water molecule and clearly you can see the molecule is made up of atoms but atom is made up of different elements the atoms of different elements so that is why we are talking about compounds here different elements okay now what if you combine like we discussed hydrogen and chlorine right so again we take one hydrogen atom from here and one chlorine atom from here and so basically what do we get here hcl right this is a hcl molecule so clearly you can see guys molecules are made up of atoms of different elements not the same element different elements clear okay and so molecules finally are made of atoms of different elements here like h2o hcl okay let's take a look at some more examples now let's say i want to combine sodium and chlorine so can you guys tell me the compound is sodium chloride so what is it made up of 
So sodium and chlorine, how do I combine these guys? Who can tell me? So let me take one sodium atom, right? And then how many chlorine atoms do I need? Fantastic, you guys are already writing the answer, NaCl, fantastic, why? Because why is this molecule like this? Please understand, because sodium valency is one. Sodium has a valency of one. And chlorine also has a valency of one. So both sodium and chlorine have a valency of one. Therefore, our molecule is basically NaCl, sodium chloride. And what is sodium chloride? Have you guys eaten sodium chloride? Salt. We eat it every day. We can't live without salt. You know, it's good for health. Too much salt is not good, but salt is definitely needed, right? So one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine, right? And this is the molecule of sodium chloride. Now, what about if we take sodium oxide? Very good. Some of you are saying ionic bonding. I'm coming to that, right? So if, if I want to talk about sodium oxide, guys, can you guys help me? How will the sodium oxide molecule look like? So how many sodium atoms do I need for sodium oxide, not sodium hydroxide here? We can do that as well, right? Let's talk about sodium oxide. Is it going to be NaO? So should I take one sodium atom and one oxygen atom? Is this the correct answer, guys? Is this the right answer? No, because valency of sodium is one and valency of oxygen is two. Right? Valency of oxygen is two. So one oxygen atom can combine with two sodium atoms because valency of sodium is one, right? And oxygen has greater power. So we need to take another sodium atom. And what will we get here? Sodium oxide with the formula Na2O. Can you see that? First you write the metal, then the non-metal. Okay? So clearly there is sodium oxide. So you can see guys, molecules are finally of compounds also, they are made up of atoms. So simple, okay? Now what is the difference here? So some of you gave a good uh, point, right? Regarding ionic bonding. So there is a difference when non-metals combine with each other, like hydrogen and oxygen, these are non-metals or hydrogen and chlorine. What type of bonds are formed? So here in these examples, you can see that non-metals are combining non-metal and non-metals. Why do I say non-metal and non-metal? Because hydrogen is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal. Same, hydrogen is a non-metal, chlorine is a non-metal. So when non-metal, non-metal combine, what do they form? Excellent guys, covalent bonds, absolutely right. They form covalent bonds. What does this mean? So we'll uh, you can watch my video on chemical bonding, basically in covalent bonds, the electrons are being shared during the combination, right? So covalent bonds are being formed. And why do these atoms form bonds? For stability. That's why atoms like, like friends, because atom itself may or may not be stable. The atoms that are not stable, they tend to react with other atoms. They tend to form bond with other atoms and form this uh, molecules. And when non-metal, non-metal combine, usually they form covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are formed by sharing of electrons between the atoms, okay? So you guys can search for my video on YouTube, Chemical Bonding, Manocha Academy, and you can check that out. But when a metal and a non-metal combine, like this case, sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal, right? So when you have a case of metal plus non-metal, then what type of bond is formed? So do you guys know? These are called ionic bonds. What is the meaning of ionic bond? Basically, sodium loses the electron and it goes to chlorine. There is a transfer of electrons. In ionic bond, there is a transfer of electrons. Same in sodium oxide. Sodium is losing one one electron and oxygen is gaining it. So metal, non-metal is forming ionic bonds. So actually what is happening here, this is many times represented as Na plus Cl minus, right? Same way here you have Na plus the sodium ion, which is there two times, and then you have the oxide ion, O2 minus, right? So you have ions involved here. 
Why ions? Because there is a transfer of electron, right? So when the sodium atom loses an electron, it becomes a positively charged ion. Chlorine atom gains an electron, it becomes a negatively charged ion. Okay, so you can watch my video on chemical bonding on that. And that is why you can see that when you look at the balance sheets, they are basically divided into cations and anions. I'm sure you've seen sheets like these, right? So please take a look here. What is the meaning of cations? Cations means these are positively charged ions, positive ions. Okay, so what does this mean? These uh, elements, they tend to lose electrons and form positive ions and you need to learn their valency. For example, let's take a look here, monovalent. So potassium is monovalent and that's why it's represented as K plus. So what does this mean? That the potassium atom, it tends to lose electron and form the K plus ion. So therefore, what is ion? Ion is basically a charged particle. Are you guys getting that? What is ion? Ion is basically nothing but a charged particle. And how is it a charged particle? How do you form a charged particle? By losing or gaining electrons, okay? So the potassium ion, it loses the electron and forms potassium, uh, potassium atom loses the electron and forms potassium ion. So you need to learn all these valencies, right? Where you need to learn all these symbols. These are monovalent, means they have valency one. Bivalent means valency two, like barium, calcium, magnesium, and so on. Trivalent, tetravalent. So these are very important. Please learn your valencies and your symbols, okay? Same, you have negatively charged ions, which are called anions. These are usually the non-metals, plus you have polyatomic also like bicarbonate, right? Hydroxide, there is O and H involved. Carbonate, CO3. And again, you have monovalent, bivalent, trivalent, tetravalent. And anions means negatively charged ions. Okay, they carry negative charge. So please remember, that atom and molecule is neutral, but ion is nothing but a charged particle, right? Cations are positively charged, anions are negatively charged. Is that clear, right? So guys, please make sure you learn these tables because they are very useful in forming the compounds, right? The formula of the compounds. So let's discuss that, that how can we quickly form the formulas using the crisscross method, okay? So how do we form the molecule formula? Let's talk about that. So let's say this is the question. Write the molecular formula of the following substances. So I want all of you to try the first question here, nitrogen, right? How will you write the molecular formula of nitrogen? So nitrogen, first you should know what is the symbol. The symbol of nitrogen is N, okay? So when we have asked to write the molecular formula, N is basically representing the atom, right? So what is the molecule of nitrogen? Can you guys tell me? What should I write here? Very good, I can see some of you already answering, right? Should it be N, N2, N3, what should it be? So nitrogen is an element, right? So for elements, we need to use atomicity, right? For compounds, we use valency. And clearly you can see in the table here, nitrogen is diatomic. Because we are not talking about a compound, we are talking about element, right? So nitrogen, in nitrogen molecule, two atoms combine to form N2, right? So very good. So nitrogen molecule is actually made up of two atoms because molecule can be made up of one or more atom. Now, how do you know how many? You have to learn the table. So you can see here clearly, it is made up of two atoms. So nitrogen molecule, the answer is gonna be N2. Fantastic, that is the right answer. What about neon guys, the next one? So let's take a look at the next one. Question number two, neon. So first you should know neon atom is the, atom is basically any, that is the symbol. And what is the molecule of neon? So what will be the answer for the molecule? Excellent, I can see that Shibani is writing the correct answer. Aryan, awesome guys, fantastic. The answer is any, why? Because neon is a noble gas. It's an element, it's a noble gas. It is monoatomic. Noble gases are so stable that they don't want to combine with other atoms, right? So it is monoatomic, atomicity is one, and so the molecule is same as the atom. Clear? Fantastic. 
So this is the correct answer. Next question. Molecular formula of aluminium hydroxide. So first of all, is aluminium hydroxide an element or a compound? What are we talking about here? Can you guys tell me aluminium hydroxide? Is it an element or a compound? Who can tell me? So aluminium hydroxide by the name, you can see there are more things involved. So very good. This is definitely a compound. And for compound, basically, we should use valency. So we should learn up our valency. Aluminium is represented by Al. Hydroxide OH. And we need to know our valency. What is the valency of aluminium? So you know that aluminium is a metal. It will be in the cation list. You can see it is trivalent. Can you see? Valency is 3. So please learn the table. So aluminium valency is 3. Or you can write plus 3 here if you want. 3 plus, right? Hydroxide is 1 minus. Always we write 3 plus, not plus 3, right? Hydroxide valency is 1 minus. You can see here, right? And so how do you get the compound formula? You just do the crisscross. Crisscross method means you exchange the valencies. So that is the technique. This is called the crisscross method. And so what will the answer be? You're basically going to write ALOH3. Now is my answer correct, guys? There's one mistake here because hydroxide is three times. So please make sure you put the brackets, okay? Because it is aluminium hydroxide. Very good. So some of you are forgetting to write the bracket. Please don't forget it in the exam. Why? Because OH whole three means three times the hydroxide. If you write it like ALOH3, this is wrong. This is right. Why? Because this is three times hydroxide. This looks like only one oxygen and three hydrogen. It's actually three oxygen, three hydrogen. So we need the whole bracket. Okay. And this is called the crisscross method of just exchanging the valency. Right. Next one, let's try ammonium hydroxide. So ammonium hydroxide, what is the formula of ammonium? The ion is NH4. That's why you need to learn all this list, right? Can you see ammonium is right here in the table? Valency is one. Okay. So you don't have to write plus minus. You can just write one here. Hydroxide is again OH. And again with the valency one. Now please do the crisscross. So what are we going to get for ammonium hydroxide, guys? What will be the answer? So the answer is basically going to be NH4 one OH one. Right. So same way here, it is Al1, but one is not necessary. Right. So we don't need to write one here. Same way, you don't have to write one. So finally, the brackets will go away because one is the same thing as writing it like NH4OH. So here, don't write the brackets. Why? Because if the number is, if the bracket is one, you don't have to write one and you don't have to write the bracket. Right. So please don't write one or the bracket here because the number is simple. But if it is OH3, then you need to write the brackets. Okay, so these will make your concepts clear. And the best way to do is practice the formulas. Okay, don't memorize them. Don't just learn it up. Please practice and understand it. And these are the simple rules and you'll get it by practice. All right, and valency atomicity, very important. Otherwise, you lose 20, 30 marks in the exam. Right, so I want all of you to learn it. Next question. Write the molecular formula of ferrous chloride. Okay, so ferrous chloride, what is ferrous? Ferrous is iron, Fe, right? And chlorine is Cl. What is the valency of ferrous? Who can tell me? What is the valency of ferrous? So please learn this. Iron is very interesting because it has two valencies. As you can see here, guys, you have iron 2, which is ferrous, and then iron three, which is ferric. Can you guys see here? So please take a look. Iron has two valencies. So yes, you'll have to remember that ferrous is valency two. Chlorine has chloride has valency one. Now you do the crisscross. So what do we get? Finally, we are going to get FeCl2. Now here we don't need to write the bracket because there's only one atom involved, right? So brackets are written when you, the number is greater than one and there are two atoms like OH hold twice. So here there is no need to write Cl hold twice. So that's not needed because there's only the chlorine atom, right? So it is Cl2. 
it's just like mathematics you know in mathematics we write 2x we don't have to write 2 bracket x right but if it's x plus y 2 times x plus y then we need the bracket because that is not the same as 2x plus y okay so it's just like mathematics when you have more than one thing involved you need the bracket okay so ferrous chloride is FeCl2 what about ferric chloride guys ferric chloride again iron and now we are going to use the valency 3 so this is the rule in chemistry us means lower valency ik means higher valency okay it does not have to be 1 and 2 does not have to be 2 and 3 uh, one after the other us means lower valency ik means higher and you need to learn the valency right so ferric means valency 3 iron chlorine valency 1 now please do the crisscross so what do you get finally FeCl3 ferric chloride very good I can see Prafula is the correct answer awesome Malvika has the right answer excellent FeCl3 Animesh very good okay Sri Lata excellent so guys please learn your valency and these symbols next question cuprous oxide who can tell me the answer for cuprous oxide so cuprous is basically copper and oxygen is oxide right so valency of oxygen is 2 but what is the valency of cuprous and I want you all of you to promise me to learn the valencies okay we are almost close to 600 likes that's awesome guys if you haven't hit the like button please hit it right now and do share our channel and our website with your friends our website is manochacademy.com I put the links below we have a lot of courses for class 8, 9 and 10, ICSC, CBSC, IGCSE, we have recently launched that board. We have a Java coding course. Wow, great to see more than 600 likes. Thanks a lot, guys. And give me the answer of cuprous oxide. Okay. Okay, I can see many different answers. Guys, you need to revise your balancey. Please promise me that after this class, you guys will learn your balancey. You can even take screenshots of these, right? So what is cuprous? Cuprous has two valencies. Please look here. Okay. We are looking at cuprous now. So cuprous you can see copper 1 and cupric is copper 2. Where, where is cupric here? Here. So can you see cuprous is valency 1. Us means 1. Ik means 2. The higher valency. So guys please learn this. And so cuprous oxide means valency 1. Now, if you do the crisscross, what will be the answer? If you do the crisscross, the answer is going to be the two will come down here to copper. Crisscross means you're exchanging the numbers, right? Exchange of the numbers. So copper two, oxygen one. And we don't have to write one. So finally, the answer is Cu2O, not CuO2, Cu2O, because you have to exchange the valency numbers, right? Next, let's try cupric oxide. So oxygen valency 2 and as we saw in the chart here, cupric means valency 2, right? So both have valency 2, oxygen and copper. So if you do the crisscross, what do you get? Crisscross means exchanging the valencies, right? So you're going to get, I'm sure you've done this method in school, crisscross method, right? So we are getting Cu2O2. Now this is interesting when you get Cu2O2 because 2 is the common factor, you divide by 2, okay? We don't write it as Cu2O2, the 2 gets cancelled, you know, and then basically we are going to get CuO because these 2 will be divided by the common factor. So finally, cupric oxide is CuO. Now one very important question, sometimes in the exam it will just be given copper oxide. Then what do you guys write? If just the question is given copper oxide. Now, copper oxide, is it cuprous or cupric? So this is where, you know, you need to learn in chemistry that cupric ox copper oxide actually means cupric oxide. Why? Because the common valency of copper is 2. Okay. So copper's common valency is 2. Therefore, copper oxide is basically CuO. Okay. It is not Cu2O, it is CuO. So if in the exam they just say copper oxide, they are actually meaning cupric oxide. Why? Because common valency of copper is not 1, it is 2. So you have to learn these points in chemistry. I know it's difficult, you know, when I was a student also, I would find 
learning all these things difficult because I keep forgetting it, but you keep revising, keep marking out the important things and you will remember. Okay. All right. Next question. Calcium carbonate. How do you work out this formula? So again, you have to remember, see, if you know your valencies and this, it's very easy. Calcium symbol is uh, Ca. Carbonate is CO3. What is the valencies, guys? Calcium is valencies 2. Carbonate valency, right? So calcium, you can see the valency here, guys. Calcium 2. Carbonate is an anion. So what is the valency of carbonate? Carbonate valency, you can see here, 2. 2 minus, right? We don't care about the plus minus. You can just write 2 here. If your teacher tells you to write plus minus, please write that. Now, if you exchange this, so what do you get? We are basically going to get Ca2. And again, because it's carbonate, it's a polyatomic ion having more than one atom strength. A carbonate CO3 whole twice. Okay. So now what will be the answer? The 2, 2 will cancel. So calcium carbonate, the formula is simply going to be CaCO3. Do you guys agree? Absolutely right. CaCO3. Very good. I see Sunaina is the correct answer. Right. Rengini has the right answer. Fantastic. CaCO3. Aryan Das. Very good. Jia. Right. Madhav has the correct answer. Rajesh. Okay. So please learn these values. Calcium carbonate. CaCO3. Fantastic. Okay. And 2 and 2 will cancel and you don't write the brackets. Okay. If needed. What about calcium bicarbonate? Next one. Yes, I'm seeing everybody's answers. Sorry if I'm not mentioning all the names here because the screen is moving really fast. I'll try to mention your name. Uh, uh, Jayashree is asking, Sir T. Java, we have a Java course on our website, you know, it's uh, and I'm going to take a second level course also, another course for class uh, 9 and 10, which is the advanced Java course. So do check out. We have Java coding on our website also. It's a, Java is a great language to learn coding. So do check it out, guys. I put the link below. And uh, we'll also be having another follow up course also. And I take live classes for Java as well. So I'll be taking that. Right. Java is a programming language. If you're asking Java coding course, it's a computer course, right? Next one, calcium bicarbonate. Okay. I can see different answers here. What is the right answer? This means you guys need to learn valency. Calcium is same bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is same thing as hydrogen carbonate. Okay. So bicarbonate is same as hydrogen carbonate. So we write it as HCO3. Now what is the valency of calcium? Calcium valency 2. And let's check out the valency of bicarbonate. Can you guys find it here? So if you look in this list here, I think where is bicarbonate? Can you guys see it here? Bicarbonate is right here. HCO3 1 minus. Okay. So valency of bicarbonate is 1. Now please do the crisscross. Exchange the valencies. So what do we get here? We are basically going to get Ca1, HCO3 because there are many atoms involved. So we have to put the bracket and it's 2. So what is the final answer? We don't need to write one. Ca, HCO3, hold twice. Are you guys getting this? Very good. I see Adarshini has the correct answer. Sanjay has the right answer. Very good. Arush has it correct. Calcium bicarbonate. So see the difference. Carbonate, bicarbonate, different answer. So make sure you guys learn your valencies and all these symbols. Okay. Very good. Aryan has the right answers. Zubair has the right answer. Vijay saying very good. Okay. Isha Matthew. Excellent guys. So please learn your valencies. Don't make it because if you make a small mistake in the formula also, there's no part marks, right? It's like writing your name wrong, writing the spelling wrong. Okay. Next question. Molecular formula of sulfur dioxide. Who can tell me? What is the formula of sulfur dioxide? Any course for class seven? We hope to be launching courses for class seven too. Right now we have for class eight, nine and 10. So do check it out in our website. I put the links below. Class seven courses also we are trying to launch soon. Excellent. I can see a lot of people writing the answer here. The best part about sulfur dioxide, you don't have to think about valency. The name itself tells you the formula. Sulfur dioxide. Di means two. So this answer is very simple. The answer is simply SO2, sulfur dioxide. Okay. And what is the sulfur trioxide answer? So easy because that is dioxide. Tri means three. So here the answer is going to be 
SO3. Who can tell me what is the valency of sulfur in sulfur dioxide? This will be an interesting question. What is the valency of sulfur in sulfur dioxide? Valency of sulfur in SO2. Who can tell me? Come on, guys. Very good. I see Sundaram has the right answer here. Meena has the right answer. Okay, I can see a lot of answers. I think Babu has the right answer. Very good. Aditi. Okay, so here sulfur in sulfur dioxide. So one trick is if you don't know the valency, take it to be X, right? Oxygen valency is 2. So if you do the crisscross, what do you get? S2OX. And what value of X will satisfy the answer? Very good. You can just try testing. 1, 2, 3, 4 is the answer, right? Because if it is S2O4, that will lead to SO2. So you're absolutely right. The answer is going to be 4. Now, can you guys tell me what is the valency of sulfur in sulfur trioxide? So we are doing the opposite question, right? We are finding the valency of sulfur in SO3. Again, use the same technique. Take it to be X or take it to be 2. So we are getting S2OX. So what value? Okay, Lakshya has the right answer now. Kajal has the right answer. Fantastic. Now many people have written the correct answer. Very good. I think you guys got the concept. Take it to be X, S2OX, and the value will be S2O6, which will give you SO3. So you guys are absolutely right. Valency is going to be 6. Valency of sulfur and sulfur trioxide is 6. So for these ones, you don't have to think of the valency just by the name, like carbon dioxide, CO2, right? Nitrogen dioxide, NO2, sulfur dioxide, SO2, sulfur trioxide, SO3. So simple. Some more questions. Write the molecular formula of lead 2 oxide. Now, what is this Roman number doing here? Have you seen this before? Roman numeral 2. Okay. So Roman numeral 2 basically means it is telling you the valency. It's a very easy question. This basically means lead with the valency 2. Oxygen, you know the valency is 2. Now do the crisscross. So what do we get here? If you do the crisscross, we are getting Pb2O2, right? We are getting Pb2O2. Okay. So finally, what will be the answer? If you do Pb2O2, the 2 will cancel. And you're basically getting PBO is the correct answer. Fantastic. What about lead 4 oxide? So simple. 4 means this is the valency of lead, right? It's lead 4. So valency 4, oxygen, you know the valency is 2. Again, do the crisscross. Okay. And so what do you get here? You're basically going to get PB2O4, right? You're getting PB2O4 over here. So can you guys tell me what will be the final answer here, guys? Okay, it's going to be because the 2 and 4, you divide it by 2, right? 2 is the common factor. So if you divide by 2, we are finally going to get PbO2 here. Lead dioxide. Is that clear? Okay. So PbO2 is absolutely the right answer here. PbO2. Fantastic. So this is lead 2 oxide and this is lead 4 oxide. And here you can see in the table, basically you have the same values given here. So lead 2 is basically, can you guys see here? Lead 2 is plumbus. Please take a look here. Lead 2 is plumbus oxide and lead 4 is plumbic. So can you see plumbus us means lower valency, ik means higher valency. Very good. So PBO and PBO2. Fantastic. All right. So this is how you practice your valencies. Please make sure you learn these tables, cations, anions, and I told you atomicity for elements. Please make sure you guys learn these tables. All right. And so what are the particles we talked about today? We talked about atoms, molecules, and ions, right? These are, in summary, these are the different types of particles. And atoms, you can have atoms of different elements. And you know that uh, atoms of the noble gases, 
they exist as molecules, right? Though you can have even hydrogen atom, oxygen atom, but they don't exist on their own. So basically, you'll get H2, O2, these are the molecules, you know, of elements. And then you have molecules of compounds like H2O, HCl, sodium chloride, we talked about sodium oxide. So these are all the molecules, you know. So that's the difference between molecules of elements and molecules of compounds. In molecules of elements, same types of atoms involved. Here, different types of atoms. Okay. And then finally, we have ions. Right. What are ions? These are charged particles like sodium ion, Na+, Cl-, oxide, O2-, calcium, Ca2+. So ions are basically charged particles. All right. So atoms, molecules and ions. These are all different particles. Important thing about molecules is they can exist independently. Okay. So molecules are, they can exist independently and they are formed of one or more atoms. So you know that these atoms can exist independently, but hydrogen and oxygen cannot, right? Like sodium atom can, iron atom can, right? The metals. So atoms may or may not exist independently, but these molecules can definitely exist independently and they are made up of atoms and ions are basically charged particles. And then of course, we took this interesting journey into the particles, right? We started from the river, we went from the river to the glass of water, from glass of water to the drop of water, then to the water molecule, and then into the water molecule is made up of atoms, and atom is made up of proton, electron, neutron. If you want to learn more about the structure of atom, you can search that on YouTube or on my website, structure of atom, okay? So do check it out. And as I said, guys, I'm excited to let you know we have got awesome courses on our website. They are valid till 31st March 2022. So they're for your next year. So do check it out. We have physics, chemistry and maths courses, these combo packs for CBSE and ICSE and even Cambridge ICSE, the International Board, we've launched these courses and these are all valid till 31st March 2022. So guys, these courses are on big discounts. If you want to take them for your next batch or for this current batch, you can take it and I'm sure you will, it will help you in your preparation because we have interactive videos. I take more live classes on our website, like on this YouTube I take, I take even more classes there. We have mock tests, quizzes and questions for you to practice and you can ask doubts. So these courses will really help you. We have for class 10 and we also have courses for class eight and nine. So guys do check out our website and please share it with your friends. The links are given below. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe right now. Click on the notification bell and great to see we have 680 likes. Can I get some more likes so that we reach 700? So you guys have been fantastic. It was a very interactive class. Do let me know your comments of how you found the class or any other feedback or things you'd like to see next time. So guys do that. And if you haven't hit the like button already, do hit it right now. And please do share out our channel with your friends. Mole concept. We have a video on mole concept. You can search for mole concept Manocha Academy on YouTube. If you want more videos and more practice on mole concept, check out the videos on our website. You can go to our website manochaacademy.com. There's a lot of useful stuff there and all these courses for class 8, 9 and 10 are available at big discounts. Okay. So we want all of you to learn and take our courses and please do share it with your friends because we are very confident it will really benefit you and help you in your exams. So thanks a lot, guys. Do molecules have independent existence? Absolutely. Molecules can exist independently, right? So absolutely right. So what is the main difference here? As I said, molecules, they exist independently, right? That means they can always exist independently. Atoms may or may not. So atoms may or may not exist independently. What does that mean? An atom like a helium atom, neon atom that can exist independently, uh, but a hydrogen atom cannot, oxygen atom cannot. It has to combine with itself or with other atoms, right? So that is the important difference. What is mole? As I told you guys, do check out the mole concept videos on our website and they're there on the YouTube channel also. You can search and for more videos, you can go to our website, okay? Right. Oh, what is the difference between iron and radical? Today it's used as the same thing. Very good. So iron and radical, good question. As it's written here, positive radicals basically means ions, right? 
So radical or ion is the same thing. We can say negative radical or negative ion. Great question there. Okay. All right, guys. Awesome. Thanks a lot for joining in this live class. Hope it was really useful for you and do share it out with your friends. I really enjoyed it because you guys were really participating well. And I, now I hope it's the atom molecule and ion concept is more clear to you now. And as I said, do check out the other courses on our website. I've put the links below and all the very best with your preparation. I'm sure you guys will do well. So here's Sandeep Manocha signing off from Manocha Academy. Uh, have a great day. Keep studying and keep, uh, uh, keep your revision going. I'm sure you guys will do well. And please do share it out with your friends. What is the difference between atom and ion? Vijay Singh is asking. As I said, atom is neutral. Ion is a charged particle. Okay. All the atoms in the world are neutral. Okay. That means they have no charge because protons, electrons cancel. But ion is formed by gaining or transfer of electrons. Right. So ion is a charged particle. And you can watch my video on that. Just search for chemical bonding Manocha Academy. Thanks a lot. 710 likes. You guys are awesome. Thanks a lot. You made my day. And uh, Java coding course, guys, do check it out. It's there on our website, right? And that's also at a big discount. So do check it out. Polyatomic ions, ions with more than one atom. You can check the definition in your textbook. Yes, I'm from Kolkata, India, guys. So I'm from India. I stay in Kolkata. All the very best. I know exams are coming soon. All the very best. Biology, we are soon trying to add, hopefully, biology also. Okay. 400k special. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot, guys. We are now a family of 400,000 subscribers. More than that. So we are Manocha Academy. We have a family of 400k over now. And that's all thanks to your love and support. So thanks a lot, guys. What's my age? I'm just 20 years old. Just kidding, you know. So anyway, I feel very young to be with you guys. So, right. So teaching all of you guys, you guys all young and working hard. I feel young too, right? One million subscribers, hopefully, right? Hopefully soon. So you guys, please do check out uh, our website and do share it out with your friends and do share out our channel. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit it right now. Yes, thanks a lot. Really big thanks for over 400K subscribers now. And that's all due to your love and support. What is atomicity? As I discussed in this video, number of atoms in one molecule of the element. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys. Bye. Take care. All the best and see you in the next class. Bye-bye.